Stan Jabalisco here. I would like to present a couple of contrasting views on how amplitude modulation works. They're contrasting or they're different uh, ways of looking at the situation. But in fact, they end up producing exactly the same result in practice. It's a little bit like um, electrons. You can think of them as a particle or as a wave. However you think of them, though, they are what they are and they do what they do. So let's just take a look at this. This, by the way, is all um, based on material presented in my book. Teach yourself electricity and electronics. I have before me the fifth edition, and I'm looking in chapter 25, which discusses receivers and transmitters and modulation methods and all of that. Uh, and it talks about amplitude modulation along with other forms of modulation. Well, what is amplitude modulation? Well, um, the, the most common way that used to be taught in how amplitude modulation actually works, and this is the way that I was originally taught, might be rendered as this diagram right here. You have a carrier wave, a radio frequency carrier wave. Just uh, hypothetically, let's just say at 830 kilohertz. That is the frequency that I used to remember, 830 WCCO. Station in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul used to broadcast the Minnesota Twins. 830 kilohertz. Well, that's just a, a little aside. Let's just say that we have that particular frequency for our carrier. The modulating waveform is the voice. Say the old, uh, one of the old, uh, venerable old uh, announcers was Halsey Hall. Does that date me? I grew up in the days of Harmon Killebrew and Bob Allison and all of that, and Halsey Hall used to interject his little uh, asides into the conversation on WCCO. Maybe his voice was this modulating waveform. Halsey Hall injecting one of his little laughs. <laughs> Sometimes, oh man, does that date me or what? Anyway, uh, Here's the modulating waveform, and here's the carrier, and as the instantaneous amplitude of this modulating waveform increases, uh, this is just a relative reference waveform here. It's not really meant to be literal in any particular sense, except the higher the peaks, the stronger the amplitude, the louder the laugh, maybe. From instant to instant in time, the louder the voice going in or the music going in on the radio modulating this 830 kilohertz carrier the more uh, the carrier increases in its instantaneous peak to peak amplitude now the carrier is an alternating current wave and as the modulation level increases the peak to peak amplitude also increases in both directions positive and negative. The, the intensity of the wave goes up and down. And if you look at an amplitude modulated signal on, a, on an oscilloscope, if you actually take an oscilloscope and look at this, uh, at the modulation, the carrier wave itself will be so compressed as to have hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of these cycles in here, so it'll just look like a band, kind of a vertical band which will increase and decrease in amplitude as time goes by, creating what they call a modulation envelope. I don't know where exactly the word envelope comes from, uh, but uh, why they use the word envelope. But that is the general way that it looks on an oscilloscope. So. That's how amplitude modulation works. Now, when you want to detect this, when you want to receive it, what you do is you pass this carrier wave through a semiconductor diode, chopping off one half of the wave 
alternations. It may be, for example, you chop off these negative, um, the negative part. You might just chop them all off. I, I don't know if I can exactly do that here. I guess I can try. Let's see what we get. I'll try and chop these all off. Well, I'm not having any luck. But anyway, imagine just this lower level here chopped off so only the positive side remains. Then you actually get variable current. With the alternating uh, current, the full wave, you don't. You don't get uh, variable current. Your, your current is always essentially zero on the average. But if you chop off that lower half, you in effect half wave rectify that AC radio frequency wave, you get the original modulating waveform back. You have to use a capacitor or something to smooth out these pulses and then but don't use such a large value capacitor that you smooth out the audio waveform itself and then you'll hear the um, the audio wave and that is an envelope detector. You can also use a class B biased bipolar transistor amplifier as an envelope detector. It in effect rectifies the signal and it also uh, will result in some gain uh, that's a little bit of a benefit there too. So that's how AM is created and that's how it's detected or demodulated. That's the way I was originally taught. That it actually varies the instantaneous amplitude of the carrier. Hence the term amplitude modulation. Amplitude. But there's a completely different way to look at this whole situation. And that is shown on the diagram at the right. Suppose that instead of thinking of this modulating waveform as a variable gain amplifier in effect that makes that carrier stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker in uh, sync with Halsey Hall's laughter or any other of those wonderful guys that used to grace the airwaves of WCCO at 830 kilohertz. Suppose instead we consider this center frequency 830 kilohertz. And suppose that instead of imagining that we're varying the gain of, these of the uh, signal with a variable gain amplifier, we are actually mixing the audio from the microphones at WCCO or wherever with the carrier. And when we do that, we get sum and difference frequencies. Sum gives us the, the sum of the carrier and the audio frequency components gives us the upper sideband or USB and the difference gives us the lower sideband or LSB. The audio from the microphones subtracts from the carrier frequency giving us these elements in a spectrum analyzer type display also known as a frequency domain display. Just as a little bit of another aside, I might uh, say that an oscilloscope display like this is called a time domain display because the domain of the graph, the independent variable, is time. Whereas down here, what we have is a spectrum analyzer type display as a frequency domain display because the horizontal or independent variable axis displays frequency. In both cases we have amplitude, relative amplitude on the vertical axis although portrayed in dBm that's decibels with respect to one milliwatt. That's just a relative way of expressing gain. Weaker and weaker, greater and greater negative numbers. So anyway, we have these sum and difference mixing products on either side of the carrier. And that's what actually goes out over the air, is this complicated double sideband signal. 
we haven't we we're doing exactly the same thing in the radio in the circuits we're using exactly the same circuit here on the right as we do on the left but instead of thinking of it as a variable gain amplifier we think of it as a mixer now when we get to the detector stage in the radio what we can think of is that these mixing products these sidebands here mix again with the carrier and the diode or class B amplifier in the demodulator, the detector, rather than acting like a rectifier, that diode introduces nonlinearity into the circuit. That nonlinearity allows this carrier wave to mix again with these sidebands. And we get again the sum and the difference frequencies. Well, the sum frequencies are going to be way out of sight. They're going to be at 1660 kilohertz, give or take a little bit, a few kilohertz. But the difference frequencies are going to lie right exactly in the audio range, the original audio range that created these sidebands in the first place, the original modulating waveform. So what we're going to get out of that mixer that receiver mixer is Halsey Hall laughing. The Minnesota Twins, Harmon Killebrew hitting another home run. That's what we're going to hear in either case. So with that, I will close out this little discussion. These are two different ways of looking at amplitude modulation. They are much different subjectively, but objectively in the practical scenario, the results are exactly the same. Just like with an electron, it's going to do what it's going to do. Whether we think of it as a particle or as a wave, it is what it is. Stan Jabalisco, signing off until next time.